hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and please subscribe to this podcast. Now, um, I'm going to do something topical today. So in the future, well, when you listen to this, it will be the future, won't it? But, you know, in years to come, it might not be, you know, it might not kind of, the first bit might not make sense due to what I'm referring to. But um, at the moment, uh, and I'm going to mention suicide, but I'm not going to talk about suicide. I'm just going to mention a celebrity that just just died, and uh, and basically it's a TV celebrity, and now there's. A lot of um, there's like a hashtag now. Uh, be kind, uh, aimed at trying to. Well, I've looked at it. It's on Twitter. Uh, aimed at maybe getting people to think before they post horrible stuff online about each other or towards each other or aimed at each other or aimed at other people Um, including the press and the kind of things that they write about celebrities but I would say it's not just celebrities that get a hard time by the press basically (laughs) anyone that's written about um, sort of in the local press as well it's, uh, I don't know, newspapers are not famously known for getting things right, to getting correct information. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my knowledge of the press in a minute, maybe. But um, it got just got me thinking because I have talked about being kind uh, in previous recordings and I've been ending my recordings on remember to be kind to yourself um, uh, you know I've been doing that for quite a while so I'm taking responsibility for that word kind yes I invented it of course not but it got me thinking oh, okay perhaps I should I talk about being kind to yourself. I haven't really talked about being kind to other people. Well, I have, but perhaps... uh, I don't know, maybe it's worth looking at. It's worth looking at the, the results that can come from... Cruelty to others or how it feels to someone to have been cruel to us and I've seen I actually was in the newspaper (laughs) in um, this is completely it's unrelated really to the topic but it is in a sort of vague way I used to do stand up comedy in the 90s not in my 90s in the 90s you know between 91 and 98 I was uh, in London doing stand up comedy or at least attempting to and the one night this uh, it was uh, a new act night where comedians were just trying out new material and I was there 
it was downstairs at the King's Head in I don't know where it is Islington I forget where it was anyway I um, this reporter came up to me and said and to another comedian and said we'd like to do an article on you like to do a you know a newspaper article on you I said oh, okay and uh, I'm not sure if it was at that place but I, basically they said where are you going to be where we can film you so I said well yeah you can come come to this next gig and it might have been come back the next week next Thursday evening anyway the reporter came along took photographs of me and the other comedian and uh, yeah really friendly did a little interview with us individually and said oh it'll be in the it'll be in the it, and this was like a, a proper it wasn't a local newspaper it was the independent which was a national newspaper and they said and it was kind of more highbrow as well it wasn't tabloid, it was, but I used to read it, I used to read The Independent because it wasn't biased towards, it didn't seem to be biased towards any political, like far right, far left kind of ideology, just, I thought, more factual, you know, just gave the news as it was, but more in depth than would be maybe in some of the other papers the ones with pictures and anyway the newspaper article came out and it was a double yeah it was kind of like the middle I think it was a double spread not the whole double spread but there's a big picture of me for some reason they took a picture of me in there and it was a black and white picture I had long hair ponytail and I was smoking a cigarette really cool picture actually but the headline was meet Britain's worst comedian that was the headline or meet, meet Britain's worst comic it was something like that it basically meet Britain's worst comedian and in the article they were reading they were the, 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 they wrote they actually were the worst comedian part was referring to the other bloke but with me they were saying well he's we don't like what he's saying but the audience are laughing and so am I because I used to be quite rude you know with the comedy I did so that was the, the reporter's words what he's saying, what Jason's saying is horrible but the audience are laughing and so am I that was his words yeah the headline was meet Britain's worst comedian and this was in 1993 and I'd spent three years getting to the point where I started to be doing quite well I say well you know for me I started to get a little bit of respect and started to get people wanting to give me money to perform only a, only a few people but it was still starting to kind of get okay started to have some really good gigs and everything and then I became the laughing stock of the comedy circuit because of that newspaper article And I started off being a laughing stock of the comedy circuit when I first started. And then, you know, eventually I started to become okay. Pre, I don't use the word good, but okay. So that ruined, pretty much ruined my comedy career and my confidence. And I never, I never recovered from it. I still kept going for a few years, but intermittently I didn't put the same energy into it after that 
So I still performed in two, 94, 95, 96 a little bit, 97. But, you know, it, there was something about that because people started gossiping about me and being cruel about me and saying horrible things and mocking me the other comedians and the club owners and stuff and the we didn't have internet then but if we had have had Facebook and Twitter I would have been ridiculed by the other people the other comedians and I wasn't a celebrity or famous or anything but I was known on the circuit because of the kind of act I did I was very young but I was very rude and very I don't know um, memorable I suppose for being whatever I was but anyway this this probably giving you too much information but I have a little bit of understanding a tiny 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 little bit of understanding of how a newspaper can really cause harm like a newspaper article can really cause harm and that caused me tremendous harm emotionally and my I wanted my career to be in comedy and it ended up not being whether it might I don't know if it could have been but I really you know I believed in myself until that and then you know everything kind of went a bit um, not so great so to someone to be a celebrity to be famous and to be in the internet era to be in you know I've seen people on Facebook be so horrible to each other, like vicious. Not, not, not even talking about celebrities. Just normal people like me. Uh, you know, people just generally putting on Facebook the vilest, most horrible things about their ex-boyfriend or their ex-girlfriend, or things like that. Really personal stuff which is just it doesn't seem doesn't seem right see I come on here and I talk about my personal life but I don't talk about other people's personal lives I don't go into detail about my family um, I don't go into detail about friends because it's not my right to do that it's their, you know, their pers- that's their personal life. I'll talk about stuff that's involved me. But at the same time, who's got the right to talk about me in my life? I haven't got the right to talk about you. I haven't got the right to be cruel to you in public or online. So it's, I don't know, that's what kind of comes up in my head when I think about the kindness be kind, hashtag be kind, um, that's going around at the moment. And it's really not about the celebrity that, that died. And that, that's kind of, that was the trigger in the same as the Me Too movement, you know, the hashtag Me Too. Um, it started off with you know a very famous um, extremely famous case in the news and then it it grew to where the general public were getting involved so that's kind of what seems to be happening with this it's a completely I know it's a different thing I'm not comparing the two but I'm just comparing it in the sense of the hashtag, the 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 way it spreads, the message. And the message seemed to start out 
from the other celebrities saying it's disgusting the way that she was treated and you know, basically uh, for those in other countries um, it's a celebrity that she got into a some kind of domestic issue uh, with her boyfriend and at Christmas and so she got arrested or so, whatever and went to court her boyfriend didn't even want charges pressed but then she was hounded by the press she lost a job that she had on telly and she was the thing is she's been in pro <laughs> she's been in programs that I don't really watch like celebrity come dancing or celebrity yeah cele strictly come dancing so I don't even know the name of it which is the most popular television programme in England. I don't think there is a more popular programme than Celebrity Come Dancing. That's kind of the top one, I think. And she won that, I think, a couple of years ago. She used to host the X Factor um, uh, after party thing. She used to be on children's TV. So she was on a lot of things that I didn't actually get to see her on. So I don't really know her as a celebrity so if if Simon Cowell you know I know Simon Cowell or Dermot O'Leary you know it's those, there's some people that are kind of clearly we, you, you know we have our own celebrities that we like don't we that we kind of maybe relate to or that we see on telly regularly and it's the same as like um, for example Steve Allen is someone that I listen to on the radio on LBC if he was suddenly to die I'd be devastated or Nick Abbott who I listen to on LBC at the weekend it would be devastating because I'm used to hearing his voice both of those people and I almost feel like I know them even though I don't really but when you hear someone's voice every day, five, six days a week, for hours at a time, sometimes, or maybe just an hour at a time, it's just like, well, you feel like you know them, don't you? So a lot of people have been affected by this celebrity, the, the, the lady that died. And so celebrity friends have come out and said... Um, we got to stop this. She was hounded, and you know they've talked about their own experiences and and the the be kind hashtag has come out, but it's starting to spread in a sense of well, let's look at what not only what people say towards celebrities online, like you know Facebook, Twitter, but also what you know politicians is another people that, that get a really really hard time but generally people see I don't get a hard time on Twitter because I've got very few followers and I think like 726 followers or something and uh, hardly anybody even looks or likes my um, posts when I put them on there I think two people regularly like my posts Facebook I've got a lot more people um, that are on you know on my on my Facebook page but really ever get anything negative on there never get anything really horrible I say never occasionally but it's really rare YouTube used to be the place I used to get um, occasionally really disgusting things posted on YouTube on my videos uh, sort of saying oh you, you look like a serial killer or you look like a paedophile or you look those kind of things like the kind of thing that you wouldn't say to my face you wouldn't say to anybody's face because you, you know you're going to get punched basically you wouldn't just 
go up to someone and say, oh, you look like a rapist. Because they're going to hurt, they're going to hit you, aren't they? So, but on online, it's okay to just type that in. People think, they feel safe to do it. And in my lifetime, I've never experienced anything like it. This is the first time, you know, um, since the internet started, I mean, but not even the internet, since Facebook and YouTube. I didn't have, I didn't feel this experience on MySpace or any of the other places before Facebook and YouTube. And I've seen it on Twitter. They're the three main places. I'm not on Instagram and some of the other places because I don't really do pictures and stuff. But some of the horrible things that people post, it's vicious. It's really, and we all know, I don't know why I'm telling you this, you know this. So, be kind. I'm going to keep coming back to the hashtag be kind so that I can, so the recordings at least a little bit sense, you know, makes a little bit of sense. Um, because you could say, oh, what's this got to do with relaxation? What's this got to do with stress and anxiety? and yeah maybe maybe it hasn't but maybe it has because guaranteed that the people that end up killing themselves because they've been hounded online before they got to that point they were under huge amounts of stress you know that that's a stress a stress level that is as as much as can be can there, as much as there can be there's no higher stress level than someone that ends up doing something as terrible as that to themselves so yeah it has got a lot to do with stress because bullying, isn't it? You know, I actually, I've had cyberbullying in the past. I had someone hound me on YouTube. Um, it's happened a couple of times, because I've been on YouTube for a long time, different YouTube channels, and there was one person and they were hounding me. Every single video I put on and every old video, they went to every single video and were posting horrible messages. I, mean, I even had someone, this is the extremes people go, I had someone um, phone me because I was a therapist on, you know, so they obviously got, went online, found my telephone number and they phoned me up, left a message, so I woke up in the morning, listened to this voicemail message, and they trolled me, and they were kind of m mimicking me doing a hypnosis recording. I've even had, <laughs> I found a video where this woman made a video on YouTube, recorded it, Named it up my name, the, the title. It looks like she'd even started a new a whole YouTube channel just to do this, and was sitting there slagging me off to her friends, talking about how I'm the worst thing on YouTube and how pathetic I am and all this. It's like, that's a lot of effort to go to, isn't it? It's like, I'm thinking, what have I done? <laughs> What did I personally do to her? And the answer is nothing. She lives in another country. The chances of me ever having met her is very, very slim. Um, I don't know, I mean, it could be an ex-girlfriend, but I just, I don't think I've even been that bad to, to deserve that kind of treatment.
so whew, so it's been weird and I and I've had it light I've had it very easy when it comes to this stuff compared to a lot of other people and I know comparing one person's problems with another person's problems isn't helpful in a lot of occasions but on this one I wasn't hugely affected I'll be honest it didn't affect me hugely it was annoying I did get upset with the person that was hounding me but I, I got into a routine of block delete block delete and I did that with every single person that was rude and eventually people stopped doing it so block delete block delete and I did that on YouTube I did that on Facebook I used to have some messages on Facebook that were weird you know it's just, but again I don't anymore and YouTube seems to have cleaned up a little bit I might be wrong but it seems to have calmed itself down a little bit compared to what it used to be like with the um, I don't know I think it and also Facebook has but I think that's because with Facebook you have to actually put your name you can't just you can't be anonymous on Facebook well you, you kind of can but you can't of course you can set up a you can get a random email address and you know do it that way but generally um, you know they're trying to get you to give you a telephone number so you can you know make sure that you can keep your Facebook safe and um, most people have pictures of themselves and if someone doesn't have a picture on a Facebook page then I assume they're not a real person and they're not I wouldn't be friends with someone that didn't have a picture um, of course it doesn't have to be of them it might be of their children and, or their grandparents or whatever I've got Andre but some people that leave it blank I get a little bit curious about people like that so I, I never I never add anyone that wants to be friends that has uh, zero picture I've always had that rule but that's just a personal thing be kind hashtag be kind my question would be why suddenly now loads of people have been bullied cyber bullied it's been a huge topic for years and years and years however maybe it's because well I don't know because I'm thinking a celebrity being pushed into killing themselves or being pushed into ending up dead has happened many times over the years you know being pushed by the press hounded by the press um, so I'm kind of wondering why what's kind of triggered now maybe maybe it's because of the younger audience because Love Island has a very young audience so the person who who just died was the presenter of that show until this you know before just before December so they've seen someone that they care about someone that they've grown up watching on television being hounded by the press and maybe being you know trolled online so now the younger generation are saying that's enough no more we're not we're not putting up with it anymore So maybe that's what's happened. Maybe that's why it's happening. Because the celebrities in the past, maybe they didn't have the audience that this this lady had, this TV presenter had. Maybe this is the audience that actually is going to 
say, yeah, we're going to do something about this. So be kind. That's the message that's being spread online. To be kind to... It's kind of like the old... I don't know if you ever heard like anyone say this, but if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Of course, I mean, that's that's no way to live your life, is it? I mean, you can't always have nice things to say. But it's quite a nice idea to not be horrible. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's that... It's not that hard, is it, really? Just to... Just to not be a knob. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think it's that complicated to be a nice person. Is it? I, d I personally don't think it is. I might be wrong, but I don't think it is. So being kind, I suppose, I suppose I'm spreading it from not just being kind to yourself, but being kind to others treating others the way that you're treating yourself so if you're treating yourself kindly then you're more likely to treat other people kindly and it's not because it has to start with you because you know there's the old saying isn't there the old cliche where well, if you can't love yourself you never love anyone else which is complete bullshit People love to say these old sayings like it means something. It doesn't mean anything. That's crap. There are people that hate themselves but love the bones of their children. I say the bones, it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? It's, that's a saying up north, but they love their parents or they love their children or they love their pet. Love a little ferret or they, you know the idea that someone has to love themselves in order to love someone else no it's not true so if anyone says that to you because people used to say that to me you know and I spent all my life I, didn't, I never loved myself and to be told well you can't love your grandmother because you don't love yourself which is basically what they were saying to me they didn't say it in those words and I thought, bollocks to that, that's not true. I absolutely, I hate myself at that time, but I love my grandmother. So the idea is you can't love someone unless you love yourself, absolute crap. However, you're probably gonna feel the ability to be more loving towards other people if you feel in that love towards yourself it's more a case if the love is moving freely if it's not blocked then maybe it can be reached out to more people perhaps and you can be kind to other people even if you're not being kind to yourself Again, someone could be spend all day working in a hospice, looking after people, helping people in the last hours of their life, holding their hand, doing all that stuff, and then going home and drinking themselves into a stupor full of self-loathing. So again, the idea is you have to you have to have be kind to yourself in order to be kind to someone else. No, but it definitely helps, and it's definitely preferable. And I'd say to anyone, if you're helping someone, if you're working in a hospice, or doing any kind of thing, anything like that, how could you not care about yourself? You're an amazing person. I mean. Genuinely, I don't think anyone would be able to disagree with that. 
anyone that spends all day helping someone like it's that's a hero so anyway that's I, I, I don't even class that as an opinion that's just a fact that's a fact someone that helps people and we all help people at times but some people devote their whole life to it you know some people like a doctor or a nurse or a firefighter uh, you know whatever paramedic of course they have their different reasons for doing it some people won't do it out of kindness but they're still being kind they might not do it out of love but they're still or compassion they're still showing compassion some people won't be in the police force because they want to help people they might just want to be in it because they want to be in control and they want to be able to boss people around and feel important but they're still going to be helping people they're still going to be saving lives regardless of what their uh, intention is what the reason they're doing it for is I've known nurses that have very little interest in the well-being of people whether it's because they're jaded because of having done the job for too long it's not that they don't care but they just kind of don't care anymore you know they don't have that passion they're not that, that interest and you can get that, that but they're still helping people I mean, if you go into a doctor's surgery, the receptionists on a doctor's surgery, I've been to, I've moved around quite a bit. And it seems to, I think, it seems that some of the doctor's surgery receptionists seem to go on a course, like the same course, and how to talk down to the patients and be very impatient with the patients and almost in an uncaring way which I, can't, I don't kind of stand but it's just something I've noticed and a lot of people have said that to me as well and no one really gets it because the one, one thing you need if you go into a doctor's surgery is kindness compassion like extra extra kindness just like a small child that's going into a foster to foster parents maybe while you know his mum's in hospital have, after having a car accident and it's going to be in there for maybe six months so that you know the small child is being looked after by complete strangers that, that little kid needs extra love not just regular love they need extra 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 more and more a high level of care and kindness which is what patients need when they go into the doctor's surgery because they might be there for an ingrown toenail but they also might be going in there to get the results of a biopsy you know it's I don't know it's the kindness I don't want to get onto the bandwagon of bandwagon the bandwagon of putting down society and people and oh we're not as caring as we used to be and society doesn't care about each other anymore meh, meh, meh. because human beings are human beings and there's lots of social issues and social reasons why things maybe have changed but I don't think humans have changed I don't think any less people would go to help someone um, that was in need as at any other time in history. So there's a school near where I live. If that school was on fire during the day with the kids in there, no less amount of people would go to help than would have, than would have done 20 years ago 
or a hundred years ago or sixty years ago there wouldn't be people thinking oh I don't care there'd be no less caring or kindness so you know in I think in, inside us we've got that kindness it's there I tell you what I noticed though a few years ago it seems it seemed as if being kind was almost like a disability to some people I think I've been judged more in some ways on the things I've done where I've been kind than the things I've done where I've been a complete arse now Andre has come out to share his oh, we should stay asleep so I don't understand that you know doing these recordings since 2006 I've been mocked by friends, family you know just almost like I'm just stupid doing it why am I doing it why am I not charging why am I doing it for free what's the point I had one person tell me oh no one appreciates things that are free they won't value it and so to be mocked and put down for doing something like this Yet the, some of the same people would accept me if I went on a shoplifting spree or if I stole a car and crashed it into someone's house by accident, of course. So I'm not saying that they'd be proud of me, but it's almost... I apologise for the sound of him running around. Anyway, hashtag be kind. Hashtag be kind. So, hashtag be tired. Oh. So, what does that mean? And it seems, I don't know, it seems kind of. It seems strange that in 2020 that something like that's coming out. You know, after all these years of existence, <laughs> well, after all these years on the internet, after all these years of newspaper harassments, press harassments, tabloids and of celebrities, and now suddenly perhaps we should be kind to each other I mean it's a great thing but I just wonder why has it taken so long for like the, a big group of people to all come together and I mean it has happened you know with Buddhists and you know as a collective they be kind to each other be kind to other people and um, uh, with a lot of different religions it's it's at the core of you know spirituality and religion is quite often to be kind to other people and be kind to each other not always necessarily be kind to yourself it depends on the religion I guess um So yeah, I just, I can't quite get my head around, you know, in the sense of the, I'm not a celebrity, I'm not famous, so I don't know what that would be like to be hounded. Although I did have a little taste of what it was like for someone else. There was, uh, there was a lady 
who I had dinner with in 1998, uh, pretty early, pretty January, February 98. I just remember it. And about three years earlier, she'd been in the newspapers because she'd had an affair with a, uh, a a minister in the parliament, you know, an MP, but it was high up, you know, a very famous MP. Well, anyway, she'd, you know, she'd um, sold the story to the newspaper and made money out of it. But at the same time, they were about to leak it anyway, so she kind of tried to sort of cash in on it, I guess. But she was hounded. You know, it kind of backfired on her. And she was hounded to the point where I didn't realise I spoke to her about it. And she said she had to leave the country. She went and lived in Australia. So I'm sitting here with her. She was with her boyfriend. And she was just so funny. She was an absolute joy to talk to. She was really nice. And so we are just having dinner. It was in a comedy club. She was basically a friend of a friend of my friend. Kind of, that kind of situation. So she told me, you know, that she gets hassle when she comes back to the UK. And she stayed away for ages because she was mistreated in public by, by the public. So, she, you know, she was saying to me how she'd had this hassle in the past. And she went to the toilet. And she came back and she was all flustered. And I said, you're right. She said, no, she was threatened by two women in the toilet. Yeah, because of what had happened in the past. They, they were like calling names and stuff. And then, it's not funny, but it's just really surreal. Probably about 10 minutes later, a group of lads that were at a table stood up and started singing an anthem because her story was connected to a football club. And they had, uh, they have football chants and she was part of a football chant at the time. And they started singing that football chant at the top of their voice I just felt for her now this is before the internet again and I'm just thinking if the internet had been around there then would she have got through it would she, you know would she have crumbled I don't mean that in a Crumbled sounds like quite a weird term, doesn't it? Almost like giving up or something. So that's not a good term. But if she had to move to another country, the other side of the world, to get away from it, imagine what it would have been like with the internet. The horrible things that people would have said to her. Especially if they'd, if they'd say that up to... Go to her up to her face and say it. Wow. I was just honestly, it was surreal. I couldn't believe it. Um, it wasn't wasn't my club. I'd have kicked the blokes out and I kicked them all out. But I, you know, it wasn't my club. It wasn't my place to do that. But whoo, it was it was just very horrible. And she was really nice. She was a very young woman when it happened. And regardless of anyone's uh, moral standing, it's, you know, we all make mistakes. But, oh, she was punished proper, proper punished for that. And... I can't get my head around 
the mentality of the people that were being vicious to her. Where's the kindness? And I don't mean kindness, because kindness, I don't think it's about going up to someone and saying, oh, I love you, when you don't. Oh, I really like your work, when you don't like their work. That's just being false. I think sometimes being kind is when you're thinking, that's that knobhead that I don't like, that's unfunny on telly. But not saying it. And thinking, that would be cruel to say that. And who am I to judge him anyway? And I don't know what he's really like. That's just what I've read about. I've read that he's, he does this. I read that in a newspaper. So kindness can sometimes be just not saying anything, I think. Just not typing those words into the keyboard, calling a celebrity a horrible name or wishing horrible things to happen to them. And I don't know how much of that actually, I've got a friend, remember there was a, there was a few young lads and they were being rude to a, um, a Chinese lady in the park and I think they were making fun of her being Chinese basically which is horrible it's horrible there's no, no way around that but they were young lads they were probably like young teenagers 14 something like that acting stupid trying to impress each other probably um, regardless of whether that's uh, doesn't make it okay but I'm just saying it's, that's what happened there wasn't any physical damage and they did get in trouble because the police came and they did get in trouble for it because she really hammered them she started hitting them with a stick <laughs> so um, but I was talking about it with my friend and she said, oh, I hope they burn in hell. I hope they get run over by a car. I hope they get cancer. And I, I thought, fuck, what? The viciousness that came out of her mouth. I didn't expect her to say nice things. I hope they get a good job when they leave school. Or, you know, I didn't expect that. Although, you know, I hope they do do a right in their life so that they don't ever do that again and they realise that what they did was wrong. But there's that, that, that mentality that can kick in sometimes um, with some people. And I've done it myself in the past. I don't do it really anymore. But I, because it was an automatic response there was, I think it was almost like medieval, <laughs> some kind of caveman response. Must kill everybody that doesn't agree with me, kind of <clears throat> weird kind of, you know, nonsensical, non-thinking response. But I think with using your brain, it can change things a bit. So I think maybe, you know, kindness for her would have been to have just noticed her saying those things and realised how awful what she just said was. But she didn't. she was focusing on the other person so hashtag kindness 
I suppose the the thing with this is we all get there's the catastrophizing isn't there the thinking that everything's too much and nothing's ever going to change or it's going to get worse and worse when in fact everything does change it's kind of one of the universal truths is that everything changes it has to there's no choice in that and it's kind of both the best and the worst part of life I would say because when things are going brilliant and then something changes it's kind of the worst thing possibly at that time but you know what when things are going really really bad knowing that things are going to actually improve is the best thing in the world and it's worth remembering that and cling on to it so you know I understand how some people would want things never to change because they want to manage to get into that little pocket of joy of happiness and stay in there forever which is unrealistic but you know if you take the gamble and accept say okay I want a life where everything stays the same forever and you're unable to get into that little pocket of joy you know it's like a little game of golf isn't it if you can't get into the hole you want first time you might end up in a different hole. It gets, and you're stuck there. And that hole might be one of pain, bereavement, or, you know, suffering. Then you start thinking, oh, perhaps I don't want this to last forever. So, you know, things changing all the time is a good thing just doesn't always feel like it especially when things are going really really well but remembering that when things aren't going so well it's going to change it has to there's no option this is not an opinion this is, is not a belief system this is a universal fact and you haven't got to believe you haven't got to believe it for it to be true you can go to bed tonight and it's dark and when you wake up at some point during the day it's going to become light you know it depends what time of the year is the sun will be up in the sky in fact the sun's up in the sky the whole time that's a universal truth as well isn't it it's always there so is the moon it's just we don't see them you know at certain times only and really to believe that things are never going to change is to believe is to have the child is kind of to have that really tiny child's mind set where they're in their bedroom they turn the light off and they believe they think that all the stuff's disappeared you know all their toys have disappeared their wardrobes disappeared even the beds disappeared the, the ceiling the halls have disappeared you know, the walls have disappeared the floors disappeared because they can't see it because the light's turned off they turn the light on again and everything reappears again that would be that mentality of actually believing that to believe in everything's disappeared when you turn the light off or a dog when you go out a dog doesn't know if you're coming back a 
apparently dogs can't tell time. Not, I mean, they don't have watches today, but they don't know if you're coming back. That's why a lot of them make so much of a fuss, because they're not sure. But as an adult, you don't have that mentality. As an adult, the reality is things are always changing. That's the reality. And that's the fact. So there's no opinions, no belief system needed. That's just fact. And I love that fact and I don't like it at the same time. Sometimes I really don't like it. You know, but other times, like the other day, I was sitting here, I was, I felt stressed. I couldn't focus on anything, couldn't even watch television. Felt hopeless, felt everything really, really crappy. But I knew somewhere in my head <laughs> that it was going to change. And I went to bed. And a few hours later, I got out of bed and it had changed. And it's just remembering that. Even if it means sticking a big sign on the wall, things will change. Or having a tattoo on your arm. Of course, I'm not saying get a tattoo. That's be totally up to you. That's probably nicer tattoos to have, maybe. But something to remind you to be kind. It seems strange in a way that we need to be, do we need to be reminded to be kind? Clearly the people that are doing the hashtag be kind do believe that we need to remind people. I can understand the need to remind each other. We might remind people to be kind to themselves because I don't think that's a natural thing. It's almost something that maybe needs to be learnt but I'd say being kind to other people is more of a natural instinctive thing you see someone struggling to get on a bus the natural thing would be to help them even if you don't you might have that inside your brain to help them I mean, I, I made myself look really silly a while back on the bus. There was a lady, and she was in a wheelchair, electric, mechanical wheelchair, and she was on the bus. She pressed the buzzer because she wanted to get off, and the bus driver got off, got off the bus, put the ramp down, and she couldn't undo the belt. She had some kind of belt on, which was attached to the bus some kind of seatbelt thing, which I didn't know they had. And she said, can someone help me please? I'm stuck, because she couldn't undo it. And the bus driver said, I can't, I'm not, I'm not allowed to touch you. He was like, put his arms up, like hands up, I'm not allowed to. I said the wrong thing, but I meant it in a nice way. I stood up and said, I don't mind touching you. And I just, it sounded a bit weird saying it out loud like that. And people were laughing. But I was at the back of the bus and no one at the front or even in the middle even seen, got up. However, I do believe that a lot of those people wanted to help. But there's something about being kind. It's almost frowned upon. I don't want to be kind because I might get judged. And I really believe that is the case and sometimes it is the case. That's what I believe. I might be wrong. It's just a theory. That perhaps something's changed in society or maybe it's always been like that. I don't know. But it's something that I've noticed there seems to be less 
more of a, re- a reluctance to step forward and help. There always, always will be someone that does it. But it seems to be less. And whether that's fear, whether that's um, embarrassment, maybe, I don't know. But ultimately, I do believe that most people do want to help. And they are feeling kindness inside towards that other person that needs help. But something's stopping them from doing it. A fear of helping others. So the hashtag be kind could be changed to hashtag um, don't be scared of being kind. End the fear of being kind. Hashtag what's stopping you from being kind. Hashtag don't let anything stop you from being kind. Or it could just be hashtag notice when you're feeling kindness towards another person. So even if you don't do anything, and someone else does, then it's fine, you don't, you don't need to have done anything because someone else has done it. So maybe you can feel good inside thinking, well I did feel kindness and I did want to help. Maybe next time I will. Just a few little ideas. I still managed to waffle on for ages. I just, uh, I suppose a little bit affected, not affected, but just interested in new, like the new energy that kind of comes out of some of these uh public traumatic events and like a, you know a very popular celebrity passing away and how the public respond so yeah so I've been saying be kind to yourself and I've been that's kind of been part of my message for a long time and I guess I don't focus as much on being kind to others. I think part <laughs> part of the reason is because I don't know. I feel that maybe I, it doesn't feel right to tell other people what to do to other people. In some ways. But I feel quite comfortable uh, making suggestions for how you should treat yourself kindly. Maybe it's partly like a judgment. Maybe I feel like I'm judging someone when I'm saying be kind to other people. But if I say, and you can say, well, I am kind to other people, or there's a reason why I don't do it. And, you don't know me you however if I say to you be kind to yourself there is no argument against that nothing you can say can argue against it because it's important that you do it again I come from a factual perspective you need I need we all need to be kinder to ourselves Whether you need to be kinder to other people, that's for you to decide. But you can take my word for it. You do deserve to be kinder to yourself. And that needs to be a lifelong practice to find new ways to be kind to yourself and to keep it going.
because just being kind to yourself today is not enough. Just like having a bath today is fine for today. It's Monday. But come Friday or Saturday, I'm going to be proper stinky. I'm going to need, you know, I'm going to need a bath before then. But I'm just saying, if that was the only bath I had for the whole week, it's only good, it's only good for really a day. And I'll start to smell really pongy. Just like being kind to yourself once a week is not enough. Every day. And I'm not talking about all day, every day. Because, you know, we need to get realistic here. If you could be kind to yourself all day, every day, brilliant. But doing it for a short period every day, doing something nice, it sinks in. Because what you do consciously, purposefully, then becomes unconscious and automatic behavior. So, hashtag be kind. And that's the end of this recording. So I realize again I've waffled on, gone in various different directions, got a little bit angry with my ferret running around, um, managed to put him into the bedroom. So he's scratching at the door. I don't know what's wrong with him today. He's hyper, really is. Um, so I'm gonna go, thank you for listening. And I'm gonna end it with what I've been talking about. Remember to be kind to yourself. And you do deserve to be happy. Sometimes I say it and I feel like, oh, am I just saying this for the sake of it? Is this just another sound bite? Am I just like, you deserve to be happy? <laughs> like, you know, but you do. And I've explained why in the past. So I won't go into it again, but you do deserve to be happy. And being kind to yourself is compulsory. Sorry. It's not up for conversation, although I will keep talking about it. But it's compulsory. It's something you need to do. It's as important as eating, going to the toilet and breathing. For your mental well-being. So, thank you for listening Take care of yourself and I shall speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.